Welcome to another episode of Gaming and Performance. I am back with another video and this time I'm going to show how you can decrease your latency for your mouse and your keyboard. So let us get started here. Now you need to go to the manual for your motherboard and see if it provides information to let you know what USB ports are directly connected to your CPU. In this case here for this particular motherboard from ASUS this will give you that information. However, when I go to another motherboard manual, it only provides real basic information. It doesn't really tell you if it's using the chipset or the CPU. Now, in hindsight, I can only guess that whenever you find out which USB ports on the back of your PC actually uses 3.2 Gen 2, it should be using your CPU depending on which one you have 5000 I think uh, for in this case Ryzen 5000 Ryzen 4000 but I think Ryzen 3000 stuck with Gen 1 but same concept you want to use the USB ports that are directly connected to your CPU and not your chipset that's where you want to put your mouse and keyboard and if they have another slot available your controller now you want to go down here to the diagram to get a better understanding of where that might be and I know most manuals are not very detailed in giving that information as you can see here on this one that doesn't have that specific information you can clearly see that you have uh, a few options here and unfortunately it doesn't really tell you a lot but here you go you know, 6 right here is for USB 3.2 Gen 1 and 7 is for Gen 2, but that is for Type C. So you know that you want to stick to these two because the first two on top is going to be for USB 2.0 ports 5 and 6. And there's no real information to tell you if whether or not that's going to the chipset or going to the CPU. Now, if you actually have a motherboard that does have that information, like this one, here it tells you 4X USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and those same four USB 3.2 Gen goes to Gen 1 when you have these series of uh, CPUs. So let's scroll down to there. Let's look at it. And as you can see here, these four are going to be directly related to your CPU while these are going to go to your chipset uh, this except except for this one this one uh, usually is reserved for your chipset so you want to work with these three having said that once you've connected the keyboard and mouse to the correct USB ports you should automatically tell the difference and responsiveness of your movements next you want to open up device manager and you want to open up Universal Serial Bus Controller and find out how many of these controllers you have. In my case, I have three, but in your case, that number could vary between one and whatever. But what you want to do is you want to find out what PCI bus it is and what device and function it is. The reason being is because you're going to use an application called Interrupt Affinity Policy Configuration Tool to find that particular host controller. Now this one says eight, zero, and one. Now I'm going to find that. I'm just gonna click on this. I'll leave a link in the description for this tool because it will help you do one particular thing that's gonna help improve the latency. And that is, you're gonna hit the U button until you find It's called USB X HCI compliant host controller. Once you find that, see if the PCI bus matches the one that you have, and it does. Device matches the one that I have, and it does. And the function that I have one it matches here. So I know I found host controller. Now, what you want to do next is you want to go to set mask, which will allow you to change it from default, which is zero. Whenever you set these affinities, keep in mind that even numbers are physical cores, odd numbers are hyperthreaded cores. So you always want to keep with the even numbers, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, etc. Once you've done that, 
you're going to need to reboot the PC and get back into Windows. Now, once you are back into Windows, you want to open up the registry and you just type regedit in the search bar, R-E-G-E-D-I-T, enter, and the registry editor should come up. You want to navigate and find computer H-K-E-Y underscore local underscore machine system current control set services KBD class and parameters now once you find that and I'll leave a link in the description for that you want to go to something called keyboard data Q size now I know you some of you will watch this video and have heard tutorials on this and one particular debate is what number to set this at because the lower the number the better the input uh, latency is supposed to be but for some people they can only go down to as low as 50 while others can go as low as 20 or 16 and there's been no fundamental reason as to why that's happening or being explained I believe I have the answer to that and that is why I asked you to locate those USB uh, ports that directly associates itself with the CPU because when you do or you have a motherboard that actually allows that you can go lower than 50 you just have to figure out what that sweet spot is and once you do find something called keyboard data Q size now this will be at decimal of 100 I've lowered it to 50 I feel that that's safe for me that's where I want it to be and I feel comfortable with the improvements I got doing that. Now I could more than likely go lower, but I haven't. A lot of trial and error playing a game and seeing if whether or not you have any problems using the mouse and keyboard going lower than 50. Now, usually you wanna be around 30 to 40. Uh, if you can do 30, you're doing good. If you can do 20, you're doing excellent. All right, but this is why I suggested that you find out which USB ports are directly connected to your CPU instead of the chipset. Because if you're using a USB port directly connected to the chipset, you will not be able to go lower than about 50. Maybe, and that's really stretching it, usually going to be around 60s. Mid 60s is probably what you're going to get out of this. And that is why some people are able to get it much lower while others do not. Now, you're going to do this for the keyboard, but you're also going to do this for the mouse. You're going to come down here where it says MOU class, go to parameters, and you may have to type in this word mouse data Q size. Now, let me step back a little bit. You may not even find parameters here under MOU class. It may just have this. You want to add this and then add mouse data Q size and you want to start it around 50 and again use decimal. Do not use hexadecimal because hexadecimal has values that are not completely numeric. Let me give you an example of that. Let's do 30. And you see it becomes 1E. So that's why you do not do hexadecimal, you do decimal, turn that back to 50. All right, so once you do that, then you go ahead and you restart the computer again. And you should notice a nice improvement in your mouse and keyboard and your ability to acquire target a lot better and track targets that are moving from side to side. So I do hope this helps you. There's one other factor that I need to include in this help guide, and that is that you have to understand what kind of mouse pad you are using. If you have trouble tracking your opponent, it may be that you need a control mouse pad which means that it's designed to move slower. And you're gonna to have to research to find out which mouse pads actually offer that. Now this is something that you're gonna to have to know for yourself. I have no way of being able to help you determine which mouse pad works best for you, but you have some mouse pads that are slow, and you have some that are medium, and you have some that are fast. You may be actually using your mouse 
on a cheap mouse pad that's fast. Usually I found that fast mouse pads are normally what is sold out there without being claimed as such. Medium to fast mouse pads. Slow mouse pads are usually considered mud pads and people have a tendency to stay away from them such as your desk pads and stuff like that. It's really a rough surface to glide your mouse on but even so it could be muddy and fast. What you really need is a controlled mouse pad. You need to research a controlled mouse pad. The Artisan FX Zero, for example, is a controlled mouse pad. Glides very smooth, but tracks a lot longer, allowing you at the time to be able to track your target better because it doesn't move the cursor very fast. It moves it very slow. The Artisan FX Zero is pretty expensive mouse pad, um, depending on where you get it from if it has it in stock it can cost you as you can see here fifty four dollars and that's just for the medium that's not including uh shipping costs because they ship it to you in a big envelope they don't roll it at all you have that and you also have for example lethal gaming gears version which is the saturn i got a saturn pro coming out but i just want to show you this this is a lot cheaper this is also a control mouse pad and it will allow you an option to be able to track your targets better if you're having difficulty tracking your targets. If your issue is that you just you feel like that your mouse pad is slowing you down, then you need a faster mouse pad and you have to research what that is. The mouse pad is more than 60% of this particular gaming tweak. The other tweaks that I showed you first only prepares you for making sure that you have the correct mouse pad for your gaming style so that you can track your targets better. If you don't have a good mouse pad that you game on, then those tweaks will not help you. It only helps you and it complements you when you figure out if you need a more controlled mouse pad or if you need a more medium to faster mouse pad because of your game style either you twitch or you'd like slowing it down and nothing you'll do will ever change that that is important people don't find it important but it is because no matter what dpi you set for your mouse no matter what tweaks you set in the game no matter how much you increase or decrease the mouse sensitivity in that game you will never ever find a match that's going to make you feel comfortable and saying that this is it i can game like this until you figure out what kind of mouse pad that you game best on. Again, a controlled mouse pad, which is slow, a medium mouse pad, or a fast mouse pad. Usually, if you are more control, a medium is going to be too fast for you. And if you are the type that you like fast twitch movements and you can control your movements very well, a medium might be a little slow. So again, you have to figure out that dynamic. That means you're going to have to buy some mouse, invest in some mouse pads and figure out what works best for you. You have homework to do. I've given you the answers to the tests. All you got to do is figure out what mouse pad worked best for you and you will gain a better experience playing your games on keyboard and mouse. So I do thank you for your time and you have a wonderful day.